You know, after we talk about banking and we talk about making money, we talk about protecting those assets and making sure that you're being financially um, prepared and sound in all the decisions that you make. But we also talked a little bit about what happens should you get sick. You know, how important is it to stay healthy? A lot of people in the new year make new year resolutions where they're going to lose weight because they want to feel great and they want to get their life back, get their body back. I think it's really important that we take a moment and we say when you make those goals, it's truly not about just losing weight. It's about making a lifestyle decision that's going to change your life, not just today, but for the rest of your life. You know, um, I, recently I've, I've put together a goal. My brother, um, I'm give a shout out to my brother and his fiance because they're getting married in May, May 10th. And I've got this audacious goal not to be the fat old sister, um, which you'll hear about soon. But um, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can feel better and the changes that you make. And there's not one cookie cutter approach to anything that you do. You really have to take a look at customizing something. So our next guest has been here to, or is here today to talk to us not only about weight loss, but feeling good, feeling better, staying healthier, you know, it doesn't do you any good if you have a million dollars in your bank account, if you're laying in bed sick, or if you can't get out of bed, you know, because you're not healthy. And so now please welcome to the set um, the fantastic Shelly Bradford. Thank you so much for being here today, Shelly. Yay, you. I'm so glad. Now tell us, what do you do? Tell What company do you work with? What do you do? I work at Imagine Your Wellness, and we are actually in Orlando, and I'm in Southwest Internal Medicine and I am their health and wellness coach. So okay. I do everything from weight loss to helping them, you know, diabetic medications and making sure that they can manage that correctly and eating correctly as they're doing that. Okay, why would that type of company hire somebody, hire a health and wellness coach? Really, it's more to help people get accountable to their lifestyles and, you know, have somebody to talk to and figure out what, how to get off the roller coaster that they're on. Okay, you know, that's true because so many people are on a roller coaster, you know, it's like, I lose the weight, I gain the weight, I lose the weight, I gain the weight, and it's a, it's a vicious cycle because they're not making true changes. They're not making, Correct. you know, changes that are going to change their life forever, Correct. which is important. And, and I've been there, done that, so I'm not casting judgment in any way, shape, or form. You know, I think it's really important that as we listen to the segment, um, first of all, Shelly can work with people. She can Skype people throughout the nation, um, and she is, is willing to continue to coach you and help you and and work with you in different ways if you want to reach out to her. But I know that no matter where you're at, if you feel as though you need one-on-one -on -one coaching and guidance, one-on-one -on -one assistance, to really get in there and decide, you know, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Why can't I, you know, make this work? And um, I know that I can refer you or she can refer you to somebody wherever you're at. And the goal is, is just to really look at your life and then decide what will work for you and how can you make, how can you make the changes that you want to make. So Shelly's come prepared to share with us a few tips today. Um, I know that one of the tips, all of the tips are fantastic because I read them. So stay tuned and listen carefully. You may want to take some notes. Um, Shelly, share with us the first tip that you would suggest for um, losing weight, feeling great, making a lifestyle change, you know, truly making a difference in 2014 so we can be where we need to be as we move forward. Right. First thing, I don't want anybody to think that this is going to be a diet because a lot of times when people start diets, it's a negative thing. They don't really, you know, it's, oh, I can't do this. I really want it to be a lifestyle change. It's got to be a lifestyle change. It's got to be something that you commit to for life. And we, so we change those habits. So how do you, so, so you don't recommend like the cabbage soup diet for, you know, just eating cabbage for 15 days or whatever, um, no. or cutting, just necessarily cutting out carbs. Do you do that for some people or not all people? I do. I, I really, I actually try to figure out what's going to be best for you. I'll talk to you about your lifestyle. We'll decide what has worked for you in the past, what hasn't. You know, what is, how are you going to feel? We want to make sure, it, and I also consider, are you an athlete? Are you not? Mm -hmm. You know, are you somebody who, you know, is a mom. What's what is going to work best in your lifestyle? For okay. sure. I think that's important because I know being a mom, it, your lifestyle definitely changes. I Absolutely. know it, it. You don't have time for as much time for you anymore. You may eat differently because you're busy and you're multitasking and you're doing different things. So how could you make better decisions right. on the go? And, right. and, and and even people that travel, you know, and anything that you do with whatever job. Um, so would you have another tip that you might want to share with people? Remember, you're not running a marathon. You're you're not running a sprint. You're running a marathon. You're actually trying to do this a little bit at a time. You didn't gain all your weight overnight, and you're not going to lose it overnight. Okay, so tell me if, if you don't if you didn't gain it all overnight, you're not going to lose it overnight. Let's say somebody wants to lose 
let's just say 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. What is the healthy, realistic way to lose those 10 pounds? How much time would you, and I know everybody's different, sure. but how much time would you say is a realistic goal? Probably a month is fair because if you're going to, it, well, I guess it really depends on what is your goal, you okay. know, like you said. Um, a month is a month to six weeks is fair. A pound to two pounds a week is a healthy, realistic weight loss goal. Okay, that's interesting. That's really cool, and that's definitely attainable. If you look at where you're at right now and where you want to be at that next next holiday season or next New Year, mm -hmm. um, you know, you mm -hmm. can definitely look at how much you can absolutely lose between now and then. Right. And right. and what would be your third tip that you want to share with us? Change your self talk. The whole I have this whole theory of if you tell yourself you can't do something, you're going to go do it. So instead of saying, I can't do this, say, I don't do this anymore. I don't eat that anymore. And then that way you don't have that person sitting on your shoulder saying, ha ha, you said you can't do it. Well, now you're going to want to do it even more. That's awesome. You know, I have two things that I've taught my kids, and one is um, you don't eat to live, you live to eat. No, you don't live to eat, you eat to live. Right. And uh, my my seven-year-old now says that. You know, he'll go, I know, I know, and he'll say that, but it's just a way to teach them that, you know, so often we get so, food is how we heal ourselves, how we socialize, you know, right. it becomes such a center of our lives that we have to remember that you're not eating that because you're, you know, if you're hungry, you right. know, eat right. to live and not right. live to eat. The other thing that I like to say all the time is nothing tastes as good as being thin feet. So right. when you're, you know, really craving something, you know, it helps you remember your goal and at least try and make a better decision. But, but like you said, not depriving yourself from everything right. because, you know, you do, if you say, I'm never going to have that again and you absolutely love it, um, you are going to break that pattern eventually. Absolutely. So absolutely. what would absolutely. be your next step? Accountability is the key for sure. I even myself still have a coach that I go to every two weeks because accountability and having somebody to answer to is absolutely the key. Okay. You know, to make sure that you have, you're not going to answer to your husband, you're not going to answer to yourself, you know, and so accountability is absolutely the key. That's awesome. Now, what are some of the techniques or the things that you find with most of the people that you coach, um, what are some of the things that you find people do most frequently that you have to help them break that pattern? That's a really good question. More, more times than not, it's people who um, eat a lot of sweets, I actually have people who have problems with drinking, and so we just have to really work through that, and I work on their emotions and their mind through that. Okay, so what, what causes them to do that? Okay, that's very interesting. So if you do have somebody that is, you know, eating sweets to deal with depression right. or drinking alcohol to deal with stress, you know, or right. whatever. So as a coach or a mentor, even though you work at a doctor's office, your goal is to help them through that. Now, yeah. I, I stopped drinking Diet Coke. Um, a while ago and the other day I remember I just had this huge urge and huge craving for Diet Coke. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling it was because I was missing something like mm -hmm. something on my mm -hmm. body was wanting something different. Are you able to coach people through that as well? Like if they say I have this huge craving for salt what do I do? You know so I don't go eat a bag of chips. Okay so I, I actually have a funny way about that. I'll say if your body is asking for that have it once. Just don't keep it in your house. If you are craving it so bad that you're willing to get in your car and drive to have it, do it. But only do it once and don't bring home a 24 pack of Diet Coke. Okay. Or don't, you know, bring home a big old bag of Dorito chips. Have a small. Mm -hmm. I would prefer you not to eat that, but if your body is craving it, have it once so you can break that craving. That's awesome. Are there any other um, suggestions or tips that you can give women that, that may be starting the new year? Like how important in as far as the clients and the patients that you usually work with, mm -hmm. how important is exercise? Absolutely um, important. Okay. Absolutely important. I tell people start slow, you know, and then, you know, let's, let's say you're going to walk on your treadmill at least, or on a treadmill at least once a day um, for 10 minutes. Okay. And then the next day you take a rest. So at least three times a week and then, you know, add a little bit of time, never go backwards. If you're going to walk for 10 minutes for for two weeks, that's fine, but if you decide to add a few minutes, never go back to that 10 minutes. Go, you know, add fi go to 15 minutes, but never go backwards. 
I think that's awesome. And you know, my daughter and I have been running um, three times a week, and it's really cute. A because she's got long, lanky legs, and so mm -hmm. her like leap is like yes. my four runs, you know, <laughs> um, as she goes. But that's our goal is is like we always push each other. Like in the beginning, we started with you know, let's just run, let's just jog, you know, mm -hmm. for thirty steps, and then go to sixty, and now it's like a hundred, and mm -hmm. and it really does mm -hmm. give you something to work for, mm -hmm. and and isn't isn't as unbearable. Right now, how important like if a woman if a woman's overweight and she's watching the segment or anybody that's watching the segment if they're overweight and they want to lose 20 pounds 30 pounds 50 pounds whatever it may be how important is it that like is it a wise decision for them to eat a salad for dinner and then give their family spaghetti and meatballs like is this just about you changing or is how important is it to in, like, bring the whole family in that's actually one of the things that I work with with especially with mothers let's try to figure out how we can fit this into your family you know, if, if we're going to put you on a diet, let's fit this into your family. Do we have to torture your family? No. But let's figure out how they can eat what you're going to eat as well. And we find easy ways to do that, easy ways to, you know, take out pasta in their diet, but you're still not going to deprive your family. Okay. Now, I know before the segment, we talked a little bit about how you have, um, if you're Skyping a client, mm -hmm. there's a specific scale that you encourage mm -hmm. them to buy. Mm -hmm. Why would they need a specific scale if they're going to hire you as a coach, if, if you're doing a Skype phone? And right. what information, like, what, what should we know about? My husband just got me a scale for Christmas. I'm wondering right. if there was something else I should have asked for, you know, sure, in sure, that. Sure, sure, um, I actually always look for a scale that does a body fat percentage that um, breaks down your bone density, breaks down your... Um, it's called a um, BMR or mm -hmm. BMI, um, but we want to know exactly how many calories that scale will say, kind of how much, how many calories you should take in, so we can make sure that we weigh it correctly with how many calories you're taking in and taking out. Okay. If you're trying to lose weight and you take out too many calories, because a lot of women do that, a lot mm -hmm. of people take mm -hmm. the medication that, that causes um, you to not want to eat, so then you don't eat at all and you're not absorbing enough calories, how bad is that? Like if you just cut out everything and just go to just salads three times a day or something like that with no dressing? It's bad. It's really bad because then you put your body into starvation mode and then your body's going to go into um, you know, the mode of holding on to everything that you eat. And in fact, I tell a story, and you've heard me tell this story. I am a marathoner, and I was running three half marathons in three months, trying to lose weight, and I thought, certainly I'll be able to lose weight. Well, in fact, I was in starvation mode, and I gained, uh, over that six-month period of training, I gained 50 pounds. And I thought, how can this possibly be? Well, it's because I wasn't eating enough, and I didn't have somebody saying, hey, are you eating this? Are you eating right? Are you getting in enough calories? Are you eating enough protein? And I know this stuff, but I just, I was just kind of in that mode of, you know, just going along. I, you know, I think that that is so critical and so important to talk about because when you're in that mode and when you take a look at, you know, we're just going along. And I think that that's the, the perfect way to end the segment because when you're going along, all too many of us in life and business and whatever you do, we get up every morning, we do what we got to do, we go home every night, we get up every morning, and it's just a constant repeat, a constant cycle. And all too often, we don't stop and take a look at, look at our life, look at what we're doing. And that's what you were doing. You were running a race and we're all running a race in life right now you know she was running a race and she forgot something that was critical and it actually stopped her from reaching her goals so know that each and every one of you are we know you're running a race we know that you're all working on goals we know that you're all setting resolutions but if you don't stop and analyze it and allow other people to help you analyze it mastermind it you know look at people a, a professor of mine once said when I worked at the university, he said, you know what, Kathleen, if you surround yourself with people that are smarter, wiser, and more successful than you, you will always continue to learn, you will always continue to grow. But if you spend your life around people that aren't as smart, aren't as wise, aren't as successful, you will spend your life teaching. And though I loved being a teacher, I would rather grow to become the best that I can possibly become and to reach each and every one of my goals um, that God intends me to reach, but I would also rather you do the same. So I, I think that that was an awesome analogy. I thank you so much for being on the show and I know that the first person that either Facebook Shelly um, on our WOMTech Facebook page sends her an email on the WOMTech directory um, Shelly Bradford and what is um, is there a way for them to reach you an email address or a phone number or just send them to the directory? Which you can you? you can email me at Shelly at southwestinternalmedicine.com okay. or you can also give me a call at 407-345-4955 and that's my office.
Okay, so the first person that's watching this segment that contacts her, she's mm -hmm. going to give you a free, is it a one hour um, weight loss consultation? Mm -hmm. Okay, Absolutely. now here's Absolutely. the catch. You have to be willing enough to say, hey, Shelly, I want you to help me lose 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be somebody that, wa that has an audacious goal that wants to make this year a better year and wants to achieve their goals. And she's going to hold your hand and help you do that. So thank you again for being here. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. It was a pleasure to have you on the thank show. You. Thank you, everybody, for watching. You know, it's just such a joy to share people's stories, to help bring education and awareness to you because, you know, sometimes things that we learned once and then forgot about um, can be so simple and so easy and so life-changing when somebody else just reminds you to turn that light bulb back on. So Happy New Year, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next month. Have a wonderful and prosperous January 2014. God bless.